Relying on open intelligence really allows us and gives us the capacity to tap into innate skillful means to, to be of benefit to ourselves and others and really use all um, a, a, a wide variety of skillful means to be in, in each circumstance um, of most benefit to ourselves and others and see clearly how we can um, yeah, be of benefit without being um, forked into all our data streams that are coming up. And data are just arising naturally. So we, we don't have any control over what next data will come up. And that's a relief because we cannot just like whatever comes up, we can allow it to be as it is. It's not our responsibility for what data comes in our mind stream. Where we can take responsibility is how we want to relate to the data. So when a data stream comes up, and a data stream is a thought, emotion or sensation, when that comes up, we can allow it to be as it is. That's our choice that we have in every moment. Rather than digging in our data stream, rather than emphasizing our data stream and trying to change it, trying to avoid it or replace it in any way, we just simply allow it to be as it is. By taking a short moment of recognizing that open intelligence and data are inseparable by allowing it to be as it is. We don't need to do anything with our data streams in order to recognize open intelligence. And when we are asking ourselves what is open intelligence, we can introduce ourselves by just stopping thinking for a moment. So we just stop thinking for a moment and recognize what remains when we stop thinking. The world doesn't stop. It's just we, we see that, wow. There's something about us always present, always alert in cognizance. The power to know, the power to feel, the power to sense is always present. So then the next thought comes in and we see that that presence, that knowing is still there as well. It it's, it's, hasn't gone anywhere. So the aim is not to get rid of all our thoughts and emotions, but just recognizing that open intelligence is inseparable from our thoughts, emotions and sensations. And that allows ourselves to allow them to be as it is. That recognition that open intelligence is always on, always present. And that's what we do when we rely on open intelligence. We bring open intelligence to the foreground in our um, in our mind stream rather than all the data stream that we were maybe focusing on or the thoughts emotions and sensations rather we recognize open intelligence more and more and that allows ourselves to just completely relax everything that comes up we see that nothing need to change in our experience our thoughts and emotions sensations they can be there as they are we don't need to change them in order to feel completely um, fulfilled happy and clear I always thought I need to arrange my data streams, I need to sort them in order to have clarity about a circumstance or a decision. I thought I need to weigh the pros and cons of a decision, really trying to figure out what is best and, and really getting lost in that. I never knew how to decide anything because I'm so into these data streams, not seeing clearly, but by allowing everything to settle. We, we, can, we become so clear in what will be the, of most benefit. It just becomes so clear just by allowing everything to be as it is. It's not a, by, by trying to figure things out. And um, through the years, my, my trust in that grew more and more, seeing that, wow, yeah, I, I don't need to figure anything out. Allowing myself to rely on open intelligence to allow things to settle. It's like when we stir um, in a pond. I love this simile of stirring with a stick in the pond. When we stir, you know, like we're stirring all the mud up, the pond is not clear. We're trying to get it clear, but we're stirring, but it will not become clear. But by allowing everything to settle to the ground, the mud settles, the water becomes clear. And that's just like it is with our own nature of our mind. Things just become completely clear, what will be of most benefit. Now, we, we cannot control the data of other people at all. I mean, we cannot even control our data, no? Like we're trying to control our negative data, it just doesn't work. So how can we control the ones of others? If we try to tiptoe around other people's data, what they might feel or might think or like that, we will, yeah, we will not, go, not go anywhere. We will not be able to do what will be of most benefit because we are so concerned of 
what other people are thinking and feeling, which is of course your, your deep wish to benefit all. That's completely, that shines through that. But what I could see is that everybody has the capacity to rely on open intelligence and take full responsibility for their data. All is well, even if people have negative data, all is well. Like, wow, I was always trying to soothe everybody's data around me because I didn't want anybody to feel negativity because I never wanted to feel it. But by allowing myself to feel all my negative data, it was so much more easy for others to allow that as well too, that other people, oh, they are, yeah, it's just the shine of mind going through like all data streams. Everybody has all kinds of data coming up. The most precious thing I can give someone is to allow them to be as they are, even if they have ne negative data, because that's their power to be of benefit. Like I could see that within myself as well, allowing myself all my data to be as they are. More and more I could see how skillful I can be in all situations. So really not trying to get rid of anything, and that's also for other people, allowing that. So by allowing people to be as they are, we can just open up completely to our beneficial nature and seeing how we can be of most benefit to all, including ourselves, without making benefit into a concept or thinking oh, how it should look like. Benefit doesn't fit into a concept. It will look in each time, place and circumstance completely different. So we don't have a rule book in what is benefit or what, what it should look like, just rather allowing really our natural knowing of what would be of most benefit, just to open up more and more by allowing all data to settle in every circumstance, in relationships. It's a, a perfect training ground to allow things to be as it is. How often we are in a relationship, is it intimate relationship or relationship with an organization? or It could be anything. Things just come up, things are stirring. Like we feel like, oh, this person did this and that, and you know, we get all wrapped up. And but the powerful thing to allow it to be as it is, and then seeing how how we can be of most benefit. Simply maybe asking, ah, why would we? Why is things are done like that? That's what I do. If I don't understand, I just ask, but in a really open way, in an open way, not of wanting to get my point across or anything, but just wanting to learn and know why things are done how they are. That also applies to relationships. Why, you know, we can just remain completely open and, and just simply ask and everything. I mean, it's amazing how things just just are clarified in that. Then we see, wow, it's, it's actually then we, somebody can share with us and then we understand why things are done the way they are. And also in a relationship, just but remaining open, not being washed away with our anger, or hatred, or upset, or feeling personally some affected, or anything like that. Because then we don't see clear. Then we are in the mood of uh, getting into a, a like defense and or offense, or you know, like how in, into a fight there. You know, like but remaining just completely open and seeing, okay, what, yeah, wanting to understand, wanting to learn, wanting to be guided and contributed to. That's just the complete openness that we. Um, and, and I can just share from my experience, everything was just so clear then. Just things become just so much clearer and, um, yeah, from that vantage of openness, we can just always remain, like, relate in such an easeful and powerful way. Completely easeful and powerful, because all our stories are not played out in that, in relating to others. Just remaining completely open, one moment at a time. That's how, how we remain open. It's not about trying to be open and ha trying to have good data about p a person or something. It's remaining open with everything that comes up. I mean, things come up in relationships, but just allowing them to be as they are and then seeing what will be of most benefit for each relationship in each circumstance. And that's what I see in my, my experience that just nat that natural openness that I always wished for, that I always tried to contrive before I came to this training, just naturally came about more and more. Just that openness and skillfulness, how to be with, with people, even when I didn't feel open, when the data of I'm not open, just remaining it, letting it be as it is. And wow, it, it's just, we naturally open up to everyone and everything. It's, it's our... Um, yeah, it's our innate capacity, and it's, it's exciting to see how that just more and more unfolds. More and more we see the equalness and evenness in everyone, 
regardless of where they're from, regardless what religion, regardless what data stream comes for up for them, regardless what the job they have or what, whatever. It doesn't matter. We, we come together in what unifies us as human beings. And that's where we relate from, from that complete openness and unity. And there we have skillfulness in, in relating with everyone. We can relate with everyone. No one left out. There's no difference. We just had put everybody in boxes and then thinking we cannot relate maybe to some people. But actually, wow, these boxes are just opened up like that. It's so beautiful and it's our natural way of, of relating and that just naturally comes about more and more. And in that also the, the importance of needing to be someone that looks a certain way. I, I love that you asked this question because it normalizes it for everyone. It's so beautiful because I think probably everyone, at least I know that from my experience, also was always so into how, how I look, how I be perceived by other people, and wanting to look good, wanting to be cool, wanting to be this and that, and allowing that to just drop away. Then also, I didn't need other people to be a certain way as well. Then I could connect more and more with that. Just that relief in not needing to be a person that has specific characteristics or looks a certain way is such a relief. Such a relief. And that just also naturally opens up. It's powerful to see it, and when it comes up, we can allow it to be as it is. It's totally fine. We don't need to get rid of, you know, get rid of that as well. When that feeling comes up, oh, I want to look beautiful, or I want that, we allow it to be as it is. It's that's the natural thing that comes up. We are not playing it out anymore. We don't need to have something in place for us to feel completely at ease and 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 loved and and um, cared for, and and not needing to, yeah, not needing also other people's to look a certain way. It's just that complete openness that we allow just naturally to open up more and more. It just comes about naturally. It's beautiful. I love what Adam said. It's just that we just naturally tap into nat our natural beauty that just shines from the inside out everywhere. Everybody is so beautiful. When I look out, I think everybody is so beautiful. I see just beautiful people um, sitting there and, and it's, it's, it's amazing to, to have that yeah, that connection and, and um, yeah, not focusing in on any characteristics of anyone, how the per person looks, what he wears or she wears, you know, it just opens up, it doesn't matter anymore. Again, we just unify in, in what, what unites us as, as human beings and that's the focus, that's where we rely on, that's what, yeah, that's where we can come together and how we can also be of benefit to ourselves and others. And it's great, it's anticipation, it's great, but we, we don't need to try to be in, an, in the now or anything like that. Thought of what, what comes after is just also rising just here and now, we're allowing to be as it is. So we don't need to try to get rid of thinking about the future or thinking about the past or anything like that. We just allow that to rest completely as well. No thought need to get rid of. But what I can see in, in my experience where I used to always spin into stories about what will be or about past, you know, like daydreaming and everything. That just naturally came to, uh, at more and more at uh, rest because the need to be somewhere else or need to have different data also relaxed. But of course data come up of, oh, maybe we're excited of what will be us for dinner or maybe we're going home and we're all excited about that and we can so enjoy that as well. So not needing to get rid of anything like that as well. But it just becomes so easeful. We see that our well-being will not be in that circumstance. Like when we are home, our, our data will be there and, and also open intelligence shining forth right there. So it, it's, it's, it's in each moment open intelligence shining forth of each thought, no matter what it is. We just allow it to be as it is. And then we can enjoy all the data that come up beautiful, all the exciting data, everything. We allow them to be and we can even enjoy them even more because we're not afraid of them disappearing because all data, they are coming, hanging out and they will resolve again. So also the positive ones. So then maybe a negative comes up, but then we are not so afraid anymore of the negative data because we see the nature of mind completely. We understand how data work and then we just enjoy everything as it is.